What's up, Superhumans BT here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we've got part two of our content creation slash creativity process video. If you haven't seen part one, click here, go watch that first, then come back. Today in part two, we're gonna be tackling workflow. So how I actually take that content I've made and get it in front of you. The last section is going to be just a quick overview on my editing process. So from start to finish, we're gonna be taking a look at how I actually edited this video here. And we're also going to be going over how to do some cool things in Procreate, and I hope you enjoy. All right, on to the video. Workflow. That is a term you're gonna hear a lot of when researching like photography and videography. And as far as I can tell, there are kind of like two different types of workflow. The first one is more of a storage workflow. And it's like, how do you get your images? How do you get your data from your camera? And then how do you save that? So whether that's through a NAS or like external hard drives, SSDs, that's not what I'm gonna be talking about. I'm gonna be talking about the other workflow. That's the creative workflow. And that would be, how do you get your images off the camera and actually deliver them in front of people? Now, workflow is a very personal thing. The apps, programs, and uh, the software that I use to get my content out in front of people works super well for me, but it might not for you. So if they work, great. And if they don't, no worries. You're gonna find something that will work for you. Now, believe it or not, everything I do is actually done right here on this iPad Pro. So all the editing to my videos, photos, all the stuff that goes on Instagram, for, for the most part, it's all done on an iPad Pro. And I really like it because there's this touch, there's this connectivity, and it's really efficient for me. Speaking of which, let's talk about what I use to edit videos. And it's a little program called LumaFusion. All right, so I actually have this video right here, the one you're watching. Because it's very tactile, I love it. Like I can make the clips bigger and edit this way. It's got like the fastest rendering I've ever seen, like more so than my computer. I had a, I had a pretty nice iMac and I sold it and I just used this. But you can put multiple streams of 4K footage on here and it just chews through it, no problem at all. And then when you render it, it renders faster than real-time playback, which is absolutely crazy. So this video is like 40 minutes long and I know it might not look like much to you if you don't edit, but to just go through this 4K footage like it's nothing and there, like I said, there's multiple streams, dude, it's, it's so easy. The other thing I like is I'm touching it. Like I can move super fast, like if I wanna cut all of that out, because I can touch it and I really, really like that. So my main or my only video editor is LumaFusion, a major part of editing videos is the music it can be it can make or break a video you know that's what you set your tone to your mood to and sometimes finding the right uh like music can be such a daunting and frustrating task this is why i use epidemic sound this is certainly not sponsored by them they don't even know who i am but epidemic's awesome because it gives you not only music like songs but it also gives you a ton of sound effects which is really important for videos. But as you can see here, it's, it's organized in such a way that everything's super easy to find. You can look up by the featured content, stuff specific for fashion, gaming, cinematic, podcast, sports. But I like to look up things either by genres, what types of music, or mood. And I usually go with mood. So I can be like, you know what, I need a happy song It'll break it down into this, and I want a happy, hopeful song, perfect. And then I can go through here, and I'm like, yeah, 20s pop, funk, boom. I can listen to it. I feel it, I can download it. Hit download, it's already done downloading, and I can just open it right up into LumaFusion. There we go, got it grab it, place it on LumaFusion, and I've got a full-fledged track, and that's awesome. So I cannot 
suggest and recommend Epidemic Sound enough. I think it's 15 bucks a month. You're gonna see that most of these do have a cost. You, I'm sure you can find some free ones, but for me and what I do, it's an investment and it's well, well worth it. The next app that I use pretty much on a daily basis is called Procreate. Now Procreate is actually like a sketching app. Um, it's probably my favorite app to use with the Apple Pencil. But as you can see here, like I use it to make my thumbnails for YouTube. But you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Like I've already got some art here that I'm, I'm doing like a 3D shadow type of thing. Got a Mario. Here's a bunch of different sketches that I did of like old Mario characters that are kind of cool. And I did all of this in Procreate. Super simple. But it's really easy. You just create a new screen. There's a bunch of different brushes that you can choose from. Uh, let's go spray paints. Fat nozzle. Let's get some crazy color here. Let's increase the size. Got this. Let's take another color. Let's go red. And we'll just do kind of a cool fade. Uh, we need some orange. Some yellow. And the harder we press, so here's really light, and then here's hard. So it's really sensitive to that. So we've got like a cool, you know, spray paint collage here. And then I can come in, go to my studio pin, add a different layer if I want. Let's change the background color. I'm just messing around. Here's my initials. Bam, bam, bam. And we could fill those in if we wanted to. So on and so forth. We could like duplicate that. Move it over. I'm gonna change the color. And now we've got a cool little shadow. Super fast, super fun. You can dive into this. But uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit later on how to use Procreate to really make your photos pop when you're posting them to Instagram. That's Procreate. The next app I use uh, a ton is Lightroom. And I'm sure you know what Lightroom is. Lightroom is kind of like your go-to photo editor. Now, if you decide to get a Fuji camera, if you have a Fuji camera, there are RAW files and JPEGs, right? RAW files have way more information, so that's gonna be your higher quality uh, file. And then JPEG has a little less information, lower quality. Lightroom is great for JPEGs, that's no problem. But if you want the most out of your Fujifilm RAW files, it's probably better to use Capture One. But Lightroom is so fast that I use it, and I almost never use RAW files because most of my stuff is just going on Instagram. So totally fine for here, but it's super easy to upload a photo. Let's grab a photo. This photo of JT Torres and Gary Tonin. Let's say we want to make it black and white. So I'm going to grab a black and white that I like. I don't really like that punch. Landscape, here's a good one. Done. Now I can come in. We can change the exposure. Brighten it up, bring the highlights down just a smidge, bring the whites down just a smidge. I wanna cool it off, so I'm gonna bring the color temp down. I'm gonna bring up that texture just a little bit. Makes it look a little more hardcore. And then I'm gonna add some vignetting. Boom, done. Then I would just take that photo, and then I would just export it. Export to camera roll, it's saved. Now I've got it on my camera roll. Lightroom is freaking sweet. Now along with Lightroom and photo editing, sometimes I will take a bunch of photos of something I'm doing that day, and I don't want them to just be photos. I wanna tell a story with those photos. I want kind of a curated look. So for that, I use this app called Unfold. It's a cool way, again, of taking your photos and giving them more context just by, let's see, let's go to the forest of Endor. So I took a road trip to the redwoods and it was amazing and I didn't want to have 
all the same look of these amazing trees. So I used Unfold to kind of tell more of a story because you can add text to it. You can do all sorts of things. So here's the slide I created. We've got a car, we've got Joel coming down. And so I can kind of put everything together. There's the trees, Joel staring at this giant stump. Another one of Joel. You can do these cool slides just by adding one of the slides and then I would pick the cam uh, pick the, the shot that I wanted to use. I can add text on it, I can change the background, I can duplicate the slide. So what's cool though is then I can export the story. So now that we've exported that story, we're gonna go into Instagram and I'm gonna share it on my IG story. Scroll up here, now you can see that whole thing so I can select those I've got all of those so now you can look at your slides and how they'll come up on Instagram stories so I don't use this all the time just if I've shot something that I think is worthy of this so if you want that curated storytelling look to your photos you want to just give it a little bit more unfold is a great way to go all right lastly this uh, is a sweet app also for Instagram stories, but it's more on the video side. It's called Mojo. Now, Mojo has all these great templates like Unfold does. I didn't mention that. Unfold has a ton. I really stick to one because I just really like that super basic contemporary look. Um, there's no frills. You can get a ton of different looks in Mojo all based on different things, fashion, photography. Now there's a set that I really like called Glitch. They just introduced these ones called Showcase and those look pretty cool. But I really like these Glitch ones and for some of the workout stuff, I think it works really, really well. Now, like I said, this is more for video and it's pretty involved. I think they need to make a couple of tweaks on how to add text more efficiently so that you can scrub through to a specific point, then add it, but I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna find a clip. Let's say I'm gonna use me showing off the X-T3 here, some of that B-roll we shot for this video. And what it does is it's gonna instantly give you a different look. So it's gonna add a glitch effect. It's gonna change like the colors and stuff, but I can come in and I can change the text. Fuji X-T3. We can take out the swipe up if we want, and there we have it. So as you're going through, you can see the glitch bars coming through, and it just gives a, you know, a cooler, different look to your Instagram story videos. I highly recommend it. Again, it's just something that's going to help separate you from everybody else making content. All right, one of the uh, things that you saw in this video was me kind of showing off a few of those photos from World Champs, and I wanted to show you how I made that. Because if you notice, uh, it's not just the photo. There's a little bit of a background with kind of my logo, and it's very faint and subtle, but it just helps the photos pop a little. This uh, was definitely inspired by Peter McKinnon in some of his videos when he shows off photos. He's got like the Peter McKinnon in the background. His are animated, which is dope. I don't know how to do that. I have an idea, but I don't know yet, and it might take a while. So I'm gonna take you through the process and procreate on how to do that and how to make it super duper simple. So I've got my background, and the first thing I wanna do is actually change the background color. So I'm just gonna come into black, boom. Now the next thing I do is I need to make that transparency pattern, uh, or sorry, I need to make that pattern with my logo transparency. And I'm gonna add a photo. And it's kind of confusing, but it's that, boom. So there's my logo. I'm just gonna resize it a little bit. So I've got my transparency. Now I need to make it a pattern. And this is probably the most efficient way I know of how to do it. I'm just gonna duplicate that layer, move it over. Boom, and then just repeat that process. So I'm gonna combine those two layers, duplicate so that it doubles every time that I do this. Now we're gonna drop the opacity of that. I just click on the end 
and I can make this very faint. And I like it about right there. The thing I wanna do is I just wanna shift it, right? I want it to be like this, just plain horizontal, just, I don't know. I just like the feel of that better. Boom, so there it is. Now I just export it, save the image. Now I can come into LumaFusion. So I've got it right here. Now you can see it doesn't go all the way across. So I'm just gonna fill the frame. There it is. This is one of my favorite photos of all time. I took it on that little EOS M50. So now I'm just gonna resize it so you can see it with that background. Boom, there we have it. Because I've been asked so much on how I edit, I'm going to very quickly take you through my editing process. I'm not gonna edit anything. I'm just gonna give you the order in which I do things. And I'm gonna be the first to say it's <laughs> it's completely backwards of almost everybody else. So here I have this video. It's a big video. We're looking at 40 minutes almost, and I'm halfway through it. There's a lot that I have to add. My girlfriend keeps texting me, and it keeps going off, and I apologize. I don't know how to turn it off. Anyway, so let's go over how I do this. I'm gonna drop as much footage, this main footage, as I can first. Main footage would have been stuff behind the couch, the intro, because I already knew what the intro was, and then everything behind this desk. That's my main footage, or what we would call like A-roll, the talking head stuff. I'm gonna lay that out into LumaFusion, all in big chunks. I'm not gonna cut, edit, anything. Then what I'm gonna go do, which is very backwards, most people do this very at the very end, is then I color grade it. I get all the color grading done right, right at the first because it's super easy. I'll show you what I mean. Like, it's just a LUT. You can see these, I've already put the LUTs on here, so right when I come in, like, uh, I just go down to Filmic, and I click it, and then it makes the footage look awesome. Again, the X-T3 is dope. It already takes great colors, and I film it in Eterna, and when I put it in, and I put that LUT on Eterna, it's basically done. So I color grade first, and that's backwards for most people. I also make sure that the audio track is the master, because I know I'm going to put backing tracks behind it. So basically what that does is that allows the music to be heard, but not overpower the vocals of the stuff that I'm saying. So now I've got all the footage, it's color graded, the audio is where I want it, then I will watch it a couple of times. I'll watch the whole thing, all the footage, and that will give me the ideas that I need for my B-roll. So that's what creates, oh, that would look good here, a close-up of this would look good, and I write all of that B-roll down on this notebook. Then I go and shoot the B-roll, add it into the iPad, and then I'll watch it and I'll go, okay, I'm gonna add this here, and then I start to add the B-roll. Now, once that's done, now I start cutting everything down. So I take out as many of the so, uh, uh, you know, those long pauses, I chop it up, I get it how I want, then I will go back through again and start adding text. So like all of these little things right here, I'm still not done. Add clips, mental health videos, so on and so forth. So I'll start adding that text. Then the final piece is just the final touches. So whatever last edits I need to make, I'll add graphics like the subscribe or the like, that sort of thing. Oh, sorry, the very last piece, which is usually everybody else's first thing is then I add the uh, audio tracks that I want. I wanna add the songs. So again, most people have the song in mind and then they cut to that. I add the audio track last. It's just something personal. Hardly anybody does that. Again, workflow is super personal and this is part of my workflow. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense.
that's how I edit. Man, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find the information useful. I hope it helps you be more creative and be able to put out better content here in 2020 if that's something you want to do. If I could give you one piece of advice before I go, it's to create every single day. Sometimes it's going to suck. Sometimes it's going to be awesome. But you need those reps. You need the practice. You need to get behind the camera and be comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's about it. I think if you can do that, you're going to have a lot of fun. Listen, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Not only does it go a long way with that YouTube algorithm, but it also lets me know what kind of content you want to see more of. If you loved the information and you think it's going to benefit you in any way, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow, and with more channel growth comes better and better content for you. Finally, hit that notification bell down below and you will be notified as to when I release the newest videos. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Come here. Shake. Shake. Good boy. Good boy. I'll get your treat later. Good job.